come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we come to you to say thank you. Thank you for bringing us through another week. Thank you for another opportunity. Thank you for giving us this chance to praise and worship your holy and divine name. I lift up Pastor Nicholas to you now and ask that you would strengthen and undergird him. Be with him as he brings the word to us this day. It is in your darling son Jesus' name I pray. Amen. He feels your pain, his heart and yours are one. The Father knows that sorrow's heavy, chains are strong, but with his strength, you'll Every night that's come before it, he'll never give you more than you can bear. This too shall pass. So in this thought you'll be comforted, for it's in his hand. This too shall pass. So set your eyes, set it on the mountain, and lift your head up to the sky. And Oh, it's in 
shall pass is in his hands. This too shall pass. Oh, it shall pass. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Wonderful. Amen. Praise our God. That was wonderful. Amen. Good morning, St. John. I'm just delighted, overjoyed to be here with you this day and to share. And to share with you some good news. Praise the Lord. My cataract surgery went over very successful. And in the post-op, the doctor examined me and said, you don't need anything else. There's no adverse condition. He said, you can go home and continue in your work and your life duties. God has blessed you with. But I want to give praise to God for you for praying for me. I heard that you lift up those prayers on Wednesday evening. And certainly God answered them, as he said. And I'm seeing clearer now than I had. I had no idea that things were so dull and dark until I had that surgery. And it went over wonderful. I praise God for all of you. Thank you so much. It's just wonderful to have a church family like St. John. To be a part of you and to bless. For if we before I begin the message, I want to thank Sister Bridget Doe for coming and blessing me with, with that solo today. Really set the stage. Made me feel like I was back in church on Sunday morning with everybody here in the pews filled with people. I want to thank Brother Minister Taylor for coming and giving the prayer and the scripture. It almost feel like normal conditions. Praise God. Thank you so much. Thank our audio and video team uh, for being with me each Saturday as we prepare, prepare for you on Sunday. Today is our communion celebration today, so following the message, we will celebrate the communion service. God has shared with me another message, I believe, that is very befitting for the time and the occasion that we're going through. Uh, there are two passages of scripture that speaks to this issue. Uh, the first is in Isaiah, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse, and then the other is in Matthew, the first chapter in the 23rd verse. And it says this. In Isaiah 14, I'm sorry, Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And then over in Matthew 1, 23, it said, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want to use those words out of that text for our subject today, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. The scriptures themselves interpret for us the Hebrew word Emmanuel, 
And that is to leave no doubt that God came to be with us. Here you find no room is left for speculation. You are to know without a shadow of doubt that God came to be with us. God wants us to know that he came in Jesus to be with us. We know in consequences of the revelations made, made by Christ that God is so with us, so near us, that our very existence is every moment upheld by him. We exist not by choice, but whatever subordinate causes may be employed, they all derive their emphasis from him. We know too, from the incarnation and doctrine of Christ, that God is with us. Not as individuals merely, but with our world and that also in the way of special grace. Oh, what a wonderful statement. God with us. He is in the world not to exhibit his power only, but that the world of men may be redeemed. What a statement. Take a moment and contemplate it and think over it. If all that we are going through and have gone through, the condition that is existing now, we can be confident that God is with us. In Christ, we see that God was with us in our very nature to accomplish our redemption. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. God is with us. You ought to be grateful for that today. Yes. You ought to be able to praise him for that today. Yes. That whatever you're going through, that whatever is happening in the world, God is with us. Number one, God is with us in the fullness of reconciliation. In 2 Corinthians 5, 18 and 19, and all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Romans 1 18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Romans 7, 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Romans 8, 1. There is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, because God is with us, reconciling us unto himself. We can no longer be condemned by sin and cursed for eternal punishment if you accept Jesus Christ because God is with us, came to be with us, that he might reconcile us back unto himself. God is with us. I love that. I'm so glad. That God said this with me in his passage of word and scripture in a time like this. God is with us. Woo! 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Second, God is with us in the blessed communication. Look at God with us. Communication. I think of some of the references of the Bible that God communes with us. I think of Peter in, on the house top, 10th chapter of Acts, verses 9 and 15. He goes up there to relax while he waits for dinner, and he was hungry. He fell asleep. And God came to him, let down a seat filled with all kinds of animals. And Spirit spoke to him in communication and said, Rise and kill Peter and eat. And Peter said, No, Lord. I've never put anything in my mouth that was common. God said to him, what I have cleansed, don't you call it common. God will communicate with us. He was with Philip, Philip in Samaria. Philip had his own agenda. He was going and preaching all through Samaria. But God wanted to expand his evangelistic ministry. Each chapter of Acts, 26 verse, he came to Philip and said, Philip, I want you to go down to the road of Gaza in that desolate area. God takes him out of a flourishing evangelistic ministry going on. Sends him out in a desolate area. Wow. Nothing out there. God knows what he's doing. He said, I want you to go there, Philip. And as Philip went down, there was a chariot leaving Jerusalem, going back to Ethiopia. And there was a eunuch of Candace the Queen in the chariot riding, reading Isaiah, this very passage in Scripture, sharing with him. Philip came close to the chariot and said understand that what you read he said how can I accept some man guide me wow. he stopped the chariot had Philip come and join him Philip got up in the chariot and went with him and he said what I'm reading here who is the writer talking about himself or somebody else and Philip went back and unraveled the scripture for him all the way through until he got to where Jesus come into the world and died for him and said if you believe you can be saved and baptized can be saved. The unit came past upon the water said to Philip, there is water? What hindered me from being baptized? Come on, they got down out of the chair and went down the pool and Philip baptized the unit. And he got up after he was baptized, went back on the chariot. The Spirit of God caught Philip up, took him on to another area. But the blessing of that message was that the eunuch went down to his homeland in Ethiopia and carried the gospel of salvation to those in Ethiopia. Yeah. God communicates with us. God communicated with Barnabas and Saul said you've been in this area too long now I want to move you into the European area in the 13th chapter and took them over and shared with them where they carried the gospel and that's how the gospel have arrived to us in America today it moved through Rome and England and Russia and all of those areas and as people expanded across they brought the gospel with them, and that's how it has arrived to us. And you heard the gospel and saved the day because God lifted up and spoke to yeah. Boniface and Saul. Yeah. God is with us in communication. I, I, I could close now, but that, that, that was one marvelous passage of scripture where God shared with Paul. When he was on that ship, Come on, 
on his way to Rome and came into Eurachlodon. Terrible storm. Ship was about to wreck and it ran aground. Couldn't sail. Couldn't have it anymore. The waves were too high for them. Wind were too strong. Everybody on the ship was frightened. Had not eaten anything for 14 days. Well, they didn't know what to do. There were some of them were ready to jump over and drown themselves and ready to give up. And that night, God came to Paul and told him, said, Paul, you will survive and everybody on the ship will survive with you because you must appear before Caesar in Rome. God communicated to him. That's how the gospel came there and they shared together. God communicated. Yeah. I'm standing with you today. And spoke to him and told him, tell everybody they'll be okay. John on the Isle of Patmos, all out there by himself, been excommunicated from society. Upset, nervous, didn't know what to do. God came to him, gave him a revelation of the end of the time and the ages. God will be with us. God came to be with us. Yes. Don't fool yourself. God will communicate with you. God in his reconciliation, God restores our relationship. In his communication, God preserves our fellowship. But there's another very important relationship with God being with us. God is with us in a very near association. Yes. The Greek particle here used is very forcible and it expresses the strongest form of with. It is not merely in company with us, as another Greek word would signify, but with, together with, and sharing with. Not just walking with us, but being a part of us in our being, watching over us, yeah. taking care of us. This, 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 this width is almost like a rivet, a firm bond, implying, if not declaring, close fellowship. God is very close to us in association. I need to lift out now another scripture in from Romans. That's a marvelous epistle in association with us. Listen to this from the 8th chapter and the 3rd verse. What the law could not do mm. in that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemn sin in the flesh. That's why Jesus came yeah. to be with us. God with us in association in our lives to protect us. God with us in our labors to comfort us. God with us in our trials and afflictions to defend us. God with us in our worship to enlighten us. God with us in our death to deliver us. Yeah. God came to, to be a part of us, to separate us 
from death. God is with us. There lies the majesty, God with us. There lies the mercy, God with us. They're in the glory of God with us. They're in the grace of God with us. In his association with us in alliance, in assistance, in harmony, and friendly terms, God with us. As an association, as an object of attention, God is really with us. He's concerned about us. He's mindful of our condition. Don't be worried. Don't get upset because of the virus that's going on. God is still alive and God is still with us. Trust him. He's going to bring you through. God is with us in association for our success and accomplishment. God knows what's going on. He's not allowed you to go through this or me to go through it, to be destroyed, to be harmed, to be forgotten. God knows what's going on. Yeah. We're going through it to be strengthening us. God is with us as we go through. I want you to realize today that you're not alone. It may look like it. it you may feel deserted. You may feel despondent and down. But God is still with us. God is still controlling the world. God is still in charge. God is with us. <coughs> he will never leave us. He's with us. He's our security. Our protector. He's our anchor. He's our escort. He's our chaperone. God is with us. He's walking with us. You may not see him through the natural eye, but he's with you. He's with you every day. Although you may stumble and fall, commit some act of sin, feel you've been deserted, but I want you to be assured today that God is with you. He's with us. He will never, never leave you. And the joy of it is he's a mighty God. A powerful God. Who can speak now. And the virus can just fade away. But even though you go through some trials and tribulation, God is still with us. What a glorious joy that you should be able to give praise and have comfort in your heart today that God is with you. God is with us. And he's the kind of God that can handle all of our problems all of our conditions, all of our circumstances. God is with us. Doesn't matter what you're facing, what you're going through. God is with you. The God who created this universe, God who created all the material things you see, all the invisible, all the spiritual things, all the joy and love in your heart, God is with you. Praise his name. Thank God that he's with us and will be with us forever. When all of this is over, we will be with him forever and forever. Thank you, God. We give you praise and glory that you are with us, that we can have the assurance that whatever we face in life, you are with us. And not by outside, but to protect us, to preserve us, to strengthen us, to keep us, to supply all of our needs. Thank you for being with us. 
I want to thank you. I pray that this message will bless you today. And before I serve the communion, I would like to extend, extend the invitation to a Christian discipleship. If there was anyone who needs to be saved today, to have this God with you. If you believe in Jesus Christ, his son, and confess your sin, and ask him to come into your life and your heart. He will come and reside in you and be with you. You will be saved and you will not have to worry about anything that takes place in this to wrestle down. Because he will be with you till he calls you home. He is with you. If you need him today, just say, Lord, forgive me of my sin. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. Save me, please. He will do it. But there's someone who, viewing this, and you've already saved, but you somewhat drifted away because things became uh, so overwhelming as a burden and problem with you and sickness and disease. And you just felt that God was not with you. I want to reassure you today. He has never left you. He's still there to reconcile you back unto him. You can return to him and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. I want to come back to you. You can do that today. Would you do that? Would you bow with me and pray, gracious God, if there's anyone that needs to be saved today, they reach out to you in faith through your son, Jesus Christ. I know you will save them. Restore those who have drifted away, Lord. Bring them back to your fellowship. Amen. Amen. Would you share with me now in the communion fellowship? I know it's a little awkward the way we are doing it now, but I believe, as I was preparing this message and sharing over it, I believe that this is a part of the communion. That Christ gave us this, a symbol of his body and all. But not only that, but as a confirmation, as an encouragement to let us know that he is with us. This communion helps to undergird that message that when we share this, we're sharing that God is with us through Jesus Christ. And when we do this, we're constantly reflecting over and over again, encouraging ourselves and reminding ourselves that God is with us. He's given us this to remind us that he is with us. And every time we share the communion, we ought to be reminded that God is with us. And he loved us so much that he allowed Jesus to die on the cross, to shed his blood, that we might be redeemed from our sin. And we ought to celebrate this today, knowing that God is with us. And just before they were to go to the cross, they were sharing the Passover celebration that God had commanded them to share the Hebrews as he was delivering them from the bondage of Egypt. And he said, I want you to keep this throughout your life. And just before Jesus was to go to the cross, he shared the Passover with his disciples. And at the concluding of the Passover, he established what we call now the Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper. And he said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. I will no, not do it anymore here with you, but I will share it with you one day in my Father's kingdom. One day we will all gather around the throne of God and share in that great communion in his glory. But for the time being now, we want to carry out 
this communion fellowship. What Jesus did after the Passover, he took a loaf of bread, lifted it up, gave thanks and said, Oh God, my Father, I thank you for preparing me a body that I might give my life for your people. And after he blessed it, he broke it, passed it to them and said, Take, eat. Let us bow and eat now together. This unleavened bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Likewise, he took the cup, fruit of the vine, following the eating of the bread, and he lifted it and, and told them, this represents my blood that shall be shed for you. Drink ye all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And after he gave thanks, he passed it to them and said, drink ye all of it. Let us bow now and commune together. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with you today. Let us continue to pray. And I want you to Feel assured that God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Amen. Amen.
Dear Lord, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be.